This setup will give you the secret to make your fan blow lots of air. And it will work for blower fans, for axial fans, for small fans, for big fans. But can you really get the small fan to blow lots of air? Here I'm using my hand to hold the nozzle to the fan and it seems to be blowing a lot less air than the fan without a nozzle. And in this example I'm taking airspeed measurements and the moment I add a part cooling duct the airflow drops by about 65%. And you might have other components such as tubing, air filters, valves, fittings. All of these components will further decrease your airflow. So how do you get your fan to blow lots of air? And this graph is the secret you've been waiting for. It's called the fan curve. So in this video we'll go over what it is, how to create one for your fan and most importantly how to use it to get your fan to blow lots of air. Let's dive in. Now the x-axis is the airflow measured in cubic feet per minute or in short CFM. But exactly how much is that? So look at this box on the table. If we measure it it's 12 inches by 12 inches and then flip the box over by 12 inches. That's one cubic foot. Now let's add a few more boxes. And all of these boxes represent four cubic feet, which is the amount of air that this small blower fan can blow every single minute. That's a lot of air for one small fan. Now that we visualize the airflow measured in CFM, let's look at the y-axis, which is the static pressure measured in inches of water. Now what happens is when the fan will blow air, the airflow will exert pressure on the walls of the adapter. And that is called static pressure and we can actually measure it. So I'll go ahead and attach a tube to the fan adapter, form it into a U-shape along the back wall and then add some water. Now notice the water level on both sides of the U. The water level is equal. Now closely watch the water level as I turn on the fan on full speed. The water level in the right tube rose slightly while the water level in the left tube drops slightly. Now I'm going to take this disc and start blocking out the airflow. Watch what happens to the water level. The water level in the right tube rose a lot more while the water level in the left tube dropped a lot. So what we are seeing is the airflow creating static pressure that travels along the tube and pushes the column of air up. Now if we zoom in on the water level again, we will notice that the water levels are about one whole spacing apart. And the whole spacing measures at one inch. And when we look at the manometer, it also measures about one. So whenever it measures one inch of water, that means there's enough static pressure to raise the column of water by one inch. So now that we visualize the airflow and the static pressure on the fan curve, we are almost ready to get our fan to blow a lot of air. But first we need to create our fan curve. And here is our setup that we will use to create our fan curve. First we'll need our fan. Then I made this extension cable so I can have the setup on the table while I'm running the fan with the 3D printer off to the side. Then we're going to need this anemometer and which is going to measure the air speed of the air coming out of the fan. Next, we'll need a manometer, which is going to measure our static pressure. Also, here's some plumber's putty in case we will need to seal off any air leaks. If you want to learn more about the equipment I'm using, check out the affiliate links they have in the notes below. Now, we will also need some custom parts. First, we need this fan adapter so that we can attach our fan to the anemometer. The fan adapter will need a port to measure the static pressure. Now we want to have a nice long section between the rectangular cross section and the circular cross section to help minimize any pressure losses. And I've also added some fins right before the anemometer. This will help stabilize the flow right before it goes in for the speed measurement so that we get more accurate and stable speed readings. Next, we'll need an adapter plate and it will secure the anemometer to the fan bracket. Also, the four nuts will make it possible for us to use different adapters in the future. Next, we will need nozzles that will restrict the airflow. And so we will have nozzles ranging from one millimeter diameter that provide very high resistance all the way up to 20 millimeters that provide almost no resistance. This amount of nozzles will be enough to create an accurate fan curve. And I've added some fins in the nozzles to also keep the airflow stable. Lastly, we'll need some gaskets to minimize air leaks between the different parts. 
So let's go ahead and assemble everything and we'll start by connecting the fan bracket and the adapter plate to the anemometer. Then we'll connect the fan and then we'll connect the largest diameter nozzle. Next we'll connect the anemometer tube and then plug the fan into the extension cable. Turn on the fan speed to 100% and we'll just double check the speed on the screen to make sure it is at 100%. Now the pressure rating will stabilize pretty quickly and the airflow speed will take a little bit longer to stabilize. Now one side note is that sometimes the rating fluctuates between two different values and to stay consistent I just chose to average both values. In this case the fluctuation is very little but at other times the difference in values can be greater such as in this example. And now we're going to record our airspeed and static pressure in the Excel sheet. And just one note that we need to convert our airspeed to airflow from feet per minute to cubic feet per minute, uh, which is basically airspeed times the cross section area of the nanometer. And to make it easier on me, I just added some formulas into Excel so that Excel would automatically calculate airflow for me. Now we're going to turn off the fan and replace the nozzle with the next size down diameter. And we're going to repeat all of our steps and record our measurements for each of the nozzles. Once we tested all of the nozzle sizes, we will have all the points we need to create our fan curve. And creating this fan curve is pretty simple. But if you want to save yourself some time, then check out the link below where you can download this Excel sheet for free. So we now have our fan curve and are ready to make our fan blow a lot of air. But where do we begin? Let's begin with the point on the very right. This is pretty much where the fan is basically fully open. There's very little resistance to the airflow and it's pretty much the most air the fan will blow. So basically this blower fan can blow 4 CFM with just under 0.2 inches of water of static pressure which basically stands for how much resistance there is to airflow. Now most of the time you're not going to have the fan blowing out into the open air. You're going to have stuff in the way which will create resistance to the airflow, which will decrease the airflow. The question is by how much? And so that's where we need to go back to the fan curve to get our answer. So let's say now the resistance increased to 0.4 inches of water. How much air will the fan blow? Well, according to our curve, it's going to blow 3 CFM. And what if now the static pressure increased to 0.8 inches of water? Well, now our airflow will decrease to 1.5 CFM. Are you starting to see just how powerful the fan curve is? Basically, if you know how much static pressure or resistance to airflow the fan will need to overcome, then you will be able to tell how much airflow the fan will be able to provide. Now before we look at a few examples, let me give you a quick tip. Stay away from the red zone, which is the small area on the left side of the curve. This is where you're going to have issues with a lot of noise, a lot of vibration, and your fan will fail early. So stay in the green zone where your fan will blow more air and will last a lot longer. So let's say you need 3 CFM of air and you take and you measure the pressure drop in your particle duct at 3 CFM and it comes out to be 0.3 inches of water. Well, that's below the curve, so you're good to go. The fan will blow 3 CFM or more. But what if the pressure drop in your particle and fan was 0.6 inches of water? Well, now it's above the curve so the fan will not be able to provide 3 CFM of air. So what do you do? Well, you have three options. Option one is to improve your part cooling duct. So if you can decrease the resistance to airflow in the part cooling duct so that the pressure drop drops to 0.4 inches of water or less, then the fan will be able to provide 3 CFM of air. But what if that's not possible? Well, the second option is to find a fan that can provide 3 CFM at static pressure of 0.6 inches of water or more. But what if you can't find the right fan that can resist this higher static pressure? Well, then the third option is to find something in the middle. Slightly reduce the pressure dropped in your part cooling duct and then find a fan that's able to handle slightly higher static pressure and you'll be able to get the 3 CFM that you need. However, to accurately use the fan curve, you must 
properly measure the pressure drop of your part cooling duct. In fact, if you don't, you will get it all wrong and you won't even know it until you assemble all the parts and won't get the airflow you need. So watch this video next where I'll show you exactly how to properly measure the pressure drop of your part cooling duct so that your fan will blow lots of air. The link will be here as soon as the video is released. 